So now let's look at the new blurs in Toon Boom Harmony 10.3. Uh, I've got my module library open here and on the filters tab we have uh, all our filters um, and the blurs that we know already are directional, blur radial and variable. So the new ones are box blur, Gaussian blur and the radial zoom blur. So I'm going to drag the box blur into the uh, network and you see that we've got two ports at the top. Uh, I want to plug the artwork into the top right port. Um, the left port, the top left port, is for a mat to which we can confine the effect. But if you don't want to confine the effect or cut it in any way, there's nothing, there's, it's not necessary to plug anything into that top left port. So with that box blur selected, let's switch over to the camera view and, um, and have a look at the properties. So uh, here are the properties for the box blur. And this is the chessboard artwork that I've got just to show the uh, ef the effect of these values as we update them. Uh, the first thing of interest is the blurriness value, uh, the blurriness section with the radius value. I'll put in a value of 12 for that and you can see that we've got uh, a box blur. It's a very distinctly vertical and horizontal boxy kind of blur. Um, I can, the fall off rate here down at the bottom is uh, set to zero by default. Um, if I increase that to say three, we've got a smoother blur, but it has less of an effect. So if I increase the radius from this point, you can see we've got a very smooth blur. Um, so the fall off rate will increase that uh, smoothness of the blur. Um, and if I turn that fall off rate down to zero with a 66, then we've, we've got the boxiness back, but it's, um, but it's a very, very blurry box. <laughs> Uh, so I'll put that back to 12. Now the other thing that we want to look at here is the directional checkbox. And if I check that, we get to separate the uh, the length and the width the, uh, of the blur. So the, uh, the horizontal and the vertical blurring. Um, so let's say I enter a higher value for the length and a low value for the width. And then uh, we've got a, a longer streakier blur in one direction. The direction of this is controlled by the angle field. So at the moment it's at zero, so it's horizontal. But if I put in say 45 degrees, we've got a 45 degree blur. Um, it's, quite, it's doubly blur at the moment because we have the bi-directional checked. It's blurring in two directions, forward and back. If I uncheck that, it only has half the effect because it's, um, it's only blurring in one direction, 45 degrees. So that's what that's for. Uh, and you'll find that these uh, bi-directional angle um, values are in other blur types. So let's have a look at those now. Oh, before we do that, let's, um, we need to have a look at the mat, uh, which is the top left port of the box blur. Uh, so I've already prepared a mat. So um, I want to plug that into the composite instead of into the box blur, just to show you what it looks like. Uh, and we'll go back to the camera view. And it's just a big letter A because, you know, A. Um, now, if I go back and plug that into the top left port of the box blur, and we go back to the camera, you can see that the effect, the blurring effect, has been confined to that A. Uh, incidentally, if you ever want to negate or invert that effect, uh, use a negate module. Um, drag that in and plug it into the mat, and that inverts the effect you will need to actually uh, negate the color and the alpha. Don't worry about the bottom one, color clamp to alpha, just the first two checkboxes. And that will invert the effect. We'll switch back here and you can see that the blur is now only happening outside the mat instead of inside it. So now let's have a look at the Gaussian blur. I'll just put those aside, uh, disconnect these ones. Actually, I'll leave the, the mat there. Um, and drag the Gaussian blur into the network and plug that in once again into the top uh, right port. The artwork goes into the top right port. If we switch over to the camera view um, and we will enter a blurriness value once again. It's the same as entering the radius into the box blur. So if I enter the same value as we did with a box blur, value 12, you can see that the blur for the Gaussian blur is much smoother. It has a greater effect. Um, so if I reduce that to say four or you know two, we can see it's still a very smooth blur. 
um, even at low values. Uh, so if I increase it to something high like 66, it blurs into oblivion. So it's a very sensitive blur and very smooth and, and pleasant looking. Um, once again, we have the directional fields um, so that we can separate the horizontal from the vertical. And we also have an angle and the bi-directional checkbox. One thing we don't have in the Gaussian blur, because it's a very smooth blur, uh, we don't have the fall-off rate. So that's not necessary um, to, to use that. So I'll put in this I'll uncheck directional, this value of 12, and I'll plug in the, um, the blur mat once again, just so you can see that in action. And if I switch back to here, you can see that the blur is only happening outside the mat. And I will just unnegate that. And there it is. It's uh, it's only it's confined to that letter A. Finally, let's have a look at the radial zoom blur, which is my favorite. Um, the chessboard is being plugged once again into the top right port. Uh, we can use the mat, but let's not use that just yet. Um, we'll switch over to the camera view and we'll play with these values in the layer properties. So skip down to uh, the blurriness field, which is about halfway down. And if I enter a value of 12, um, and immediately the spin blur takes effect. Um, I'm just going to skip down to the to near the bottom here and uncheck bidirectional, just so we've got it spinning in one direction rather than forward and back. Um, so it's only spinning in one direction now with a blurriness of 12. Uh, the other thing of interest here is the direction section where we've got a bunch of presets um, arranged as buttons. And these little icons are pretty self-explanatory, but the top one in the middle is a zoom blur. So I'm going to press that and see what happens. And right away, we've got this interesting zoom effect. And this would be really cool for something like, say, a character falling towards the ground. And this is his point of view as he plummets towards like a, a road or <laughs> something morbid like that. Um, so that's the zoom blur. That's zooming in. And the, the zoom button at the bottom of these presets is a zoom out. Um, or it looks like it's actually the other way around, uh, as the icons suggest. But uh, then we've got on the sides, we've got the spin blurs, um, left and right, or anti-clockwise and clockwise. And then in the corners, we've got these twist blurs that each are across between the zoom and the spin. So a twist is a is a zoom combined with a spin to give it that kind of spiraling effect. And the corners, um, the bottom corners are zooming out and the top corners are zooming in as they twist. Um, so as you press these buttons, you'll also probably notice the custom field is updating. Uh, this value here can be animated or you can enter your own custom values. But um, if I click the, uh, the function curve, I can create my own values and uh, transition between zoom and spin. Uh, so this also has a fall off field that we can change. So if I change that to two, it has less effect, but it's a smoother blur. So I'll increase the, the blurriness to compensate for the lesser effect. And uh, there we go. It's a smoother blur, but put it up to really high. And there we've got some really cool artwork. Now, one thing that you may be wondering is how do we control the center of the blur? Because the pivot point is happening from the center of the screen at all times. But what if we want it to happen from the corner or from, like, say, a character's shoulder or something, if you want his arm to spin? Um, the way we do that is with the... I'll just reset this. Uh, put that onto a fall-off rate of that and zoom. Let's say we want to zoom in on this top corner. Instead of on the center, we want to zoom in on the top corner. So uh, the Shift F11 shortcut will show controls. Um, that's what we use to show controls for the pegs. You show the, the path or the trajectory of a peg. Um, but here in the top of the camera view is the Show Control button. If you don't see that here, just right click and you can find the camera, the camera view tools there and click that button or press Shift F11 and you'll get a little red dot. Um, using your transform tool or one of your advanced animation tools, hover over that little red dot and you'll see a little uh, four-way cursor, a little move icon. Um, you can then drag that to anywhere that you want the effect to center on. So right now we've got the zoom centered on the, uh, 
uh, oops, I selected the wrong thing. You need to have the, the radial blur selected when, you, um, when you're doing this. So select the radial blur and that will give you access to this little control. Um, so yes, it's centered on the top corner now, or you can move it down and uh, center the effect anywhere else. It looks really cool with the spin effects as well. So the um, that's the center point for the spin effect. Going back to the, um, the the layer properties, the top section is dedicated to this little point. Um, you can see the X and Y axis are, uh, are values for the, the their coordinates for where this um, little point is positioned. So uh, you can also animate that as well as indicated by the little function curve buttons. Finally, let's just uh, switch over and change uh, and add the uh, the blur mat. And if we switch back to the camera view, we can see that the blur has been confined to that mat. Um, no surprise there. And by negating it, we uh, reverse the effect. Um, the other final thing just to mention is that there's a peg input as a peg port on the radial blur. So if I go to the move uh, tab of the module library, I can drag a peg into here and plug it into the blur. And that uh, allows me to move that um, the blur center point around as well. So if I go back here and I'm now moving the center point of the blur um, using the peg and I could also uh, attach the mat to that if I wanted to do that um, just by simply attaching the mat to the peg in this way so I just separate things there so it's a bit easier to read um, yes like that and then we can move things around together, move the mat and the, the center point, the spin point. So that's about it for the new blurs. Next up we're going to look at practical examples for each of these. I prepared three examples here. Um, the first one is a character swinging a rope dart and, and I've used a, um, a spin blur on this bit of rope and if I pause it you can see that um, if I step through the frames you can see that this is a, a spin blur that's centered on the hand so that the, the end of the dart is uh, kind of blurred more. And this helps to smooth in the gap between the frames. Uh, and a gap between frames causes strobing. If I just switch to um, the program and show you the file for this, the, uh, the artwork, um, and I press play, you can see that this strobes quite badly. In, and traditionally we would fill in the gaps between the frames with a stretch or a smear drawing um, or dry brush. Um, but with the spin blur it's a little bit more realistic and it does the same job. Next up is this fan blade which um, without the spin blur it strobes badly as well and it even has that kind of realistic um, strobing backwards kind of effect that you always see in live action uh, wheels and helicopter rotors and things like that. Um, so a, a spin blow puts a, a, fills that in quite nicely and gives it some realism. Uh, the cool thing about this uh, for me is that I can um, turn this over in 3D and add just a nice little helicopter. Uh, and I'm going to put a tail rotor on and we've got the same thing going on there but just in 3D and of course that looks really cool uh, when it's rendered as you can see here. The final example is um, a space warp. So this is just a ship in space and I've applied a zoom blur. I'll scroll through the frames here. Uh, on the stars that takes place over 10 frames. So the, when, the, when the ship goes into warp, the stars blur into the background. And that's just a, an example of an animated zoom blur. So that wraps up the section on the blurs. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about my favorite effects, turbulence. <laughs>